Welcome marvelous sentient beings. This is a quick overview of a drone logging database app. It doesn't try to be everything to all people, but it should accommodate most flyers. Now this also doesn't attempt to reproduce what is already captured from your manufacturer's flying app, such as flight paths and flight time and different things like that. This drone logging app simply is a flexible pre-flight checklist as well as a maintenance tracker for commercial operations so that if ever audited, you can quickly and easily show you check the airspace, you know what airspace you're flying in, uh, you check the weather the, and you have the METARs listed that you are focused on the cloud height, uh, your max ceiling you can fly um, above ground level, and that you brief your crew, who your crew is, etc. It also tracks details about the operation that may assist the commercial operator in billing. You could export this and uh, figure out the number of hours that you spent on a particular project, depending on how you use it. Now, it uses a thing called the Mementos database app, which is free for the PC as well as Android and syncs to the Mementos cloud. Now, the free version is limited to three libraries as well as 100 megabytes of cloud storage space, but that should be enough uh, for most people unless you're doing a lot of flying and a lot of logging, and then obviously you can just buy some more space. Let's get into it and I'll show you where to find the Mementos app, how to download the templates that I've built, and a quick tutorial on how to use them. Hello marvelous sentient beings. First thing we want to do is we want to go to the Play Store and all we need to do is put in Mementos, Mementos database. There it is right there. Um, and so I'm just showing you where you go, you install it, and once it's installed, you can go and use it. Here it is installed on my home screen. I'm going to click on it. And after you've downloaded the, the three libraries, you actually only download two libraries, it automatically includes the one, then you'll see this on the screen. But let me go show you how to do that. First of all, you have to go to the uh, hamburger up there, then you click on catalog templates. And then you just search on drone and there's not a whole lot of drone applications in there, but there are others other than mine. Uh, there's Drone 2, Drone by the same guy, and a SUAS pre-flight checklist. Uh, for mine, you just you can click on it and then you uh, download uh, with the download button down here. And then for the maintenance, you do the same thing. Once you've done that, you'll get back. You can go back to your libraries and you'll see these three items. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add your drones. So to do that, you go into here and you just click this and you say you figure out, okay, what's the drone name? I'll call it test tester. Uh, registration number, we'll call it one, two, three. After the wait, you can put in the model. We'll just call it uh, whatever we want. All right, uh, then the model will call it air. All right, so that's all you need to do. Now, when you do that, all that is gonna allow is when you're choosing your drones from your maintenance screen or the drone logger, it will choose drones that you've already put in, okay? So I got a couple of samples in here, but let's go ahead and go through it, the whole process. So the first thing is an operations name. We'll call it test op. And then the next thing is, what is the description? Uh, we're going to be looking at a water tower, a water town. That sounds good too. It puts in today's date, you can change that. It also puts in the current location, you can change that. Hopefully when you do this, you're actually doing it where you're out there, but you don't have to do it that way. Uh, the operation start time and the operation end time. This is the operation, not the flight time. Um, this is for commercial pilots that need to kind of track their hours, okay? Um, select drone for operation. This is, you know, this is where we just uh, did this. I just put uh, the tester drone in there so we can click on it. Uh, control station identifier. Basically, what airport did we get our um, data from? The METARs and air, what airspace did we check, etc. So TKI is fairly close to me. I'm in class G airspace for today. Uh, what app did I use? I'm mostly using Sky Vector. Uh, the other thing that you notice is there's a few defaults in here. Uh, though you can change those as well. Uh, and then the copy of the sectional chart. Okay, so one of the things that, at least in my training class, it mentioned that you should uh, 
not only know where you went, but even be able to show what you looked at. If you can do that and you get audited, you're much more likely to have grace if you do actually accidentally make a mistake. Uh, authorization if needed, you can have a copy of that in here, a copy of your waiver in here, no TAMS website that you used. Um, you can also say, okay, here I'm going to say, uh, what's it called, VFR pilot training today. All right. So uh, the VF, and then the METARS website, you can do that. And I put this in here so you can actually copy and paste the METARS here. Um, now, even though I, you can put the METAR in there, I ask you to pull out the visibility in miles. Why do I do that? Simple. It focuses, um, did you meet that three miles, three statute miles minimum? Okay, and today let's say it's six. Uh, structure, height, and feet. Okay, this is the structure that I'm going to be observing if that's what I'm doing. Um, that helps you note, okay, well, if I'm going to be observing a structure that's a thousand feet high, but the lowest cloud layer is 1200 feet, then what is the maximum allowed, max altitude allowed to fly today? What is that? Well, it's 500 feet minus 12, I mean, 1200 minus 500, which is 700 feet, which means I can't do it. Might as well just stop. Um, however, if the cloud cover is at 1900 feet, the max flight level I can do is 1400, um, which is actually 400 feet above uh, the structure, which I can do. So let's change that to 1800. That makes more sense. And then in here, I can only fly to 1300. So I can't actually fly 400 feet above it because I have to stay 500 feet away from the clouds. So then the temperature. The temperature is just kind of a reminder, hey, if it's really cold, keep those batteries warm until it's flight time. During the flight, it'll probably keep itself warm enough unless you're flying in negative degree weather. Uh, if it's hot, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, maybe put them on ice before you fly. I don't know if that's a good idea. All right, so and then this also tracks your crew, okay? Who's your visual observer for visual line of sight? Uh, who is the person operating the controls? And who is your remote pick, pilot in command? And then also your payload weight, okay? Do you have a payload? If you do, what is the payload? Now you have your pre-flight checklist. It's real simple. Batteries. Are the terminals cleaned? Um, is there any expansion of the battery pack? Are they fully charged? Are there leaks? Are there cracks, etc.? cetera? Uh, and are each one under 200 charges? That's a somewhat research number. Um, it's kind of on the low range for most lithium-ion batteries. These are used uh, pretty heavily when they are used as far as... Uh, they're under a big load, so someone may want to take that down to 150, whatever you want to do, but you can edit these. Obviously, I don't lock anything down. Uh, the SD card is loaded and formatted. External bay doors are closed, covering the USB ports and SD card ports, etc. Propellers free of nicks, bends, tears, cracks, etc. Propellers mounted correctly and are on tight. Heat sink clean, free of dirt and obstacles. Casing motors free of dirt, uh, grass, obstacles, etc. Software shows that IMU is calibrated. I don't think that needs to be calibrated every time. Obviously, you can change it if you want. The compass has been calibrated for this operation. I do think that should be calibrated before every operation, um, especially when you're going to different areas. And the total weight is less than 54.9 pounds. Actually, it should be less than 55 pounds. Now, safety procedures. So if I'm flying in a risky area where there may be a lot of people um, or potentially things that could break, have I identified a second landing zone? Uh, safety cones, these are simply so people will more likely say, hey, this is an authorized individual doing an authorized task. People are much more likely to leave you alone. Uh, irregular, and so this is for the VLOS, the visual observer for visual line of sight, uh, making sure before you fly that all irregular obstacles are noted, such as power lines, random strings, balloons, birds, people, whatever it may be, things that you wouldn't expect to be there um, or didn't realize were there, you try to figure it out before you fly. Okay, and then you just jot, jot them down here. It's just about being safe. Max height based on cloud height. This is the calculated field. It's letting you know you can only fly to 1,300 feet. Max flight set two in the, your app. Okay, well, in this case, I don't really need to go 300 feet above the tower. I really need about 150 feet. So I'm going to put 1,000, or sorry, oh my gosh. I am going to put in 1,150 feet. So 150 feet above the object. 
X flight height is set to avoid the clouds. So the 1300 there, it's set to 1150. And then the return home height. Well, I can't really set it to 150 because I need to make sure that that is set to 1150. And then what is my lost link? Well, I'm gonna set that to return to home. It could be set to hover, all depends on your situation. If you're in a moving vehicle, you don't really want it to return to home. You may or may not, it just depends. And then have I briefed the crew on the obstacles, the weather, uh, any, anything like that, and what the whole operation's like. And that's basically how you create an entry for your pre-flight. Now, the next thing we have is drone maintenance. It's a little bit simpler da database. So we're gonna say we have some maintenance here. We're gonna maintenance the propellers, we're gonna maintenance today, and we're just gonna say replaced. All. And then we're gonna say, well, what drone did we? Well, I'm gonna say I did it on Melacor's mic, okay? And then the serial number part ID, uh, I don't know if propellers have those, but we'll say one, two, three. And then the manufacturer did not fix that. I just replaced the propellers, okay? So now I have a log of when I've changed the repellers, as well as this one has a battery on my silly drone. Um, so this was obviously just an example, but I replaced that battery because it died for whatever reason, and I can mark that in the notes. But now what you have is when you go in here, you can see, okay, well, I did a Muddy Creek um, stream research. I did a Bermuda Island flight, ATT cellular tower inspection, and that. Uh, this, these are each individual log, and in that log basically tells you the date and what the operation was, okay? Uh, in the drone maintenance, it tells you what I fixed, the date, and on what drone. The thing that you might want to know is if you click on the three buttons here, and you click on edit, you can go down to this where it says any of these fields, all these are just fields that you saw. You can go down anywhere, it says no TAMS websites. If you click on that, then you click on items, you can add or delete any of these items. So make this database your own, and hopefully this is a good uh, head start for you guys. Thanks, bye.